Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the integrated audit and specifically we are wrapping this up and forming the opinion. Now what is an integrated audit? It's the auditing the financial statement plus the internal control over financial reporting at the same time and issuing an opinion about the financial statements as well as the internal control over financial reporting. The auditor's objective, again an integrated audit, is to express that opinion. Well, how do we express the opinion? We have to. We have some work to do. We have to plan the engagement, use the top-down approach, test and evaluate the design, test and evaluate the operating effectiveness of the internal control over financial reporting. Then we could be engaged in two type of reports, non-issuer and issuer. In the prior session, we looked at non-issuer report. In this session, we would look at the issuer. Issuer is the PCAOB. Now. PCAOB companies, they always will need to have an integrated audit. Simply put, they have to audit their financial statements plus internal control over financial reporting. For non-assured, remember, it's optional. It's whatever the company needs it or not. Also, in the prior session, we talked about what is a control deficiency, significant deficiency, and material deficiency. And we discuss who do we report those deficiencies to. For control deficiencies, significant deficiencies, and material deficiencies, we would always inform management in writing as well as the audit committee. For significant and material deficiency, we would inform the people in charge of governance, and since it's a PCAOB, we would assume it's the audit committee in writing. Okay? So, when do we have to inform those groups prior to issuing the report on internal control? Now, now we're going to look at the report, and this report is published to the outsiders because this is a PCAOB audit. Just like with non-issuer, we're going to have either a separate report or a combined report or a combined report. Simply put, we might have two reports. One report could be separately for internal control over financial reporting and one report that talks about internal control over financial reporting plus the audit of the financial statements. If two reports are issued, so if we are dealing with two reports here, one the for the financial statements, one day for the internal control over financial reporting, they have to reference each other and we will see how in a moment. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. The best way to look at this is to actually look at the report itself. And what's what I like about the reports are they summarize this. They summarize everything that we did, who's responsible for what at this point. So this is a separate report. We'll have an introductory paragraph. First, it's it have to say report of independent register PCAOB for public accounting firm, which is the word independent has to be there. Notice it's, it's to the shareholders and the board of directors. We assume obviously the shareholders are outsider. The board of directors, we assume they are independent. We have audited Adams Company internal control over financial reporting as of the date based on the criteria which we're going to be assuming COSO. Now, the company is responsible for maintaining effective internal control over financial reporting. And our responsibility is to express an opinion on the management internal control over financial reporting. So in the introductory paragraph, we say what we what we did, what's management responsible for, what are we responsible for? Then we will have a scope paragraph. In the scope paragraph, we just talk about how do we conducted our audit. And according with PCAOB United States, those standards require that we plan and perform the audit to obtain reasonable assurance about whether effective control over financial reporting was maintained in all material respect. 
Our internal control audit over financial reporting, including an understanding of the internal control. Remember, we have to understand the internal control. We have to test and evaluate its design and operating effectiveness. Basically, it's what we did throughout the integrated audit. Our audit also in included performing such procedures as we consider necessary in circumstances. We believe that our audit provide a reasonable basis for our opinion. So this is the scope. Then we will give you the definition of internal control. I am not going to read this because we saw this in the, for the non-assure. You can pause and read this. Basically the definition, what is internal control? And this is a boilerplate definition. If you don't know what internal, internal control is, this is a boilerplate definition. Then we will have also inherent limitation paragraph. Simply put, we have to remind you, although this is what internal control do, you know, uh, making sure, uh, provide reasonable assurance that the transaction are recorded, provide reasonable assurance regarding prevention or timely deduction of unauthorized acquisition, use or disposition. We have to remind you that there's always inherent limitation, that the internal control may not be working as, as expected. Just want to remind you that it's not a perfect system. That's what the inherent limitation is. So because of the inherent limitation, internal control over financial reporting may not prevent or detect misstatement. Also projections important of any evaluation of the effectiveness to future period is subject to the risk and control may become inadequate because of the changes in condition or that the degree of compliance with the policies or procedures may deteriorate. So look, don't, don't project too much into the future because things could change. Then at the end, we will have our opinion. Adam Company maintain in all material respect effective internal control based on the identified control criteria. We assume COSO. Then we have a reference to what? To the financial statement audit, because remember, this is a separate report. This report only internal control over financial reporting. Therefore, we have to mention that we also have a report for the auditing of financial statements. We sign city or state or country, whatever we are doing, and we date. Or we can issue a combined report. What is a combined report? It's a one report where the internal control over financial reporting plus the financial statement audit are in the same report. Again, the word independent to the shareholders. Notice it's opinions because we're issuing more than one opinion. Opinions on the financial statements. Remember financial statement plus internal control over financial reporting. Now we're going to talk about both of them. We have audited the balance sheet as well as the financial statement. We list them for the period, uh, for the period. We have also audited the company's internal control over financial reporting. This is what we did. Now, what is our opinion? In our opinion, the financial statement present fairly in all material respect. So for the financial statements, according to GAP, they are fairly presented. Also, in our opinion, the company maintain in all material respect effective control over financial reporting based on the identified criteria. We assume COSO. So notice here, we are giving a clean opinion on both financial statements and internal control over financial reporting. Then we're going to have the basis for the opinion. Then we talk about management responsibility. Obviously, management responsibility is to maintain effective internal control over financial reporting and for its assessment of the effectiveness, so on and so forth. What did we do? We conducted our audit, basically just same thing as we spoke in the other in the other paragraph. Those standards require that we plan and perform our audit to obtain reasonable assurance that the whether the financial statements are free from material misstatement. I did not, I did not mean the previous report when we do a financial statement report. This is basically, again, standard boilerplate type of language. Our audit inc included performing procedures to assess the risk of material misstatement of the financial statements, whether due to error or fraud. Our audit included evaluation of accounting principle, basically when we, wh whatever we talked about. Also, our audit also included performing such other procedures as we consider necessary in the circumstances. We believe our audit provide a reasonable basis. Again, same exact language. Also, we will have a definition of internal control. What is internal control? and inherent limitation, basically the same thing. I just basically copied and paste. Also, at the end, we will have, if there's any, should be critical audit matters, we list them. The signature, we have served the company as the company's auditor as of since whatever that year is. City or, and state or country, date. The date, it has to be the same for the internal control over financial reporting as well as the financial statement. And the date cannot be earlier than the date on which sufficient appropriate evidence has been obtained. Now, this is a clean opinion. Sometimes we, we might have to give an adverse opinion. Under what circumstances? Just like non-issuers, 
one material weakness and if you don't know what material weaknesses go to the prior session will give you an adverse opinion think of material weakness a serious weakness in the internal control over financial reporting okay include the definition of material weakness if we're giving an adverse an adverse opinion and refer to management assessment of the material weakness and if management doesn't include the material weakness then we state so in the report and we talk about the material weakness also we determine the effect the the effect of this adverse opinion on the financial statement opinion as well now we still have one session to go talking about when we have modified reports so again we looked at clean and adverse those are the two extremes sometimes we might have to change the language someplace in between we might have a scope limitation as well as changing the language of the report what should you do now go to four hat lectures work mcqs previously re released ai cpa questions to help you understand and be able to answer questions about integrated audit on the cpa exam look study hard the cpa exam is worth it don't take any chances and stay safe.